Hello everyone and welcome back to another amazing chess video. For today's challenge, we'll be trying to beat Dark Souls 3 while playing as the enemy with the best feat in the entire game. That's right, today we'll be playing as the Mimic. For those who are new to the channel, the rules for this run are on the screen, but in short, we've doubled every required boss's HP, including our own for the sake of consistency, otherwise in most cases we would just die right away, since you can't typically heal or roll while playing as an enemy. We've also given ourselves access to these phantoms, but we'll only be able to bring three at one time, and if they die, they are permanently dead and can no longer be used for the remainder of the run. This means we'll have to use them wisely as we make our way through each boss. Lastly, we play on the highest new game difficulty because we're not casuals. As far as our moveset goes, we have access to most, not all of an enemy's moves while taking control, so if you don't see me using a move, then that's because I can't use it. Let's talk about the Mimic for a second. This enemy, while one of my favorites, is unlike the Soul of Cinder in that it does not have a very expansive moveset. When we're taking control of it, these are the only attacks we're able to use. But what it does have is an amazing movement speed, a deceptively small hurt box, and this. Now, full transparency, normally you can only grab models similar to the player characters, but this wouldn't be a Mimic run if we couldn't do the Mimic's signature move. So for the purposes of this run, I've enabled each and every boss to be hugged, and it makes for some pretty hilarious interactions. I think that pretty much covers everything. There's an FAQ in the description if you have any more questions. Let's jump into the run. But before we start, I was looking through the game's code, and did you know that the Mimic has a 0.01% chance to drop an extremely rare item? I was super surprised when I saw it. I don't know, it's crazy. In all of my runs, I never... Not gonna lie, I'm super nervous. I have no idea how this is gonna go. Oh wow, we hit like a truck. Let's go for the grab. Let's throw some kicks in here too, cause why not? We didn't even flinch. In case you didn't know, the Mimic has very good poise. It's 75, which is just 10 short of a Black Knight's. Oh, poise break. Smashed, absolutely smashed. He had no chance. So it was at this point in the run when I realized something. This grab is busted. And just like that, we beat three bosses solo. The next three fights weren't too eventful either. This is a Dripnir fight. Here's some more Deacon ASMR. And Pontiff Sullivan got chain grabbed while he kept trying to summon his clone. Things were starting to get a little stale. I was suffering from success, if you will, so I decided to pay a visit to Aldridge since he gave me so much trouble in the past. With my newfound power, I fully expected this to be a walk in the park. You know what they say, Aldridge? Revenge is a dish best served by a mimic. Wait a second, why can't I grab him? Maybe I have to get a little closer? What's going on? No! For some reason, I just couldn't grab Aldrich. Even now, I'm still not sure why that happened. I tried everything, but Gwen's son refused to be hugged. Probably because his father never loved him. It was finally time for some backup. I wanted to get him out of the way ASAP and brought Albert plus Swordmaster as DPS and Cirrus to heal us. The match starts off pretty well. I just wish Cirrus wouldn't cast Dark Moon Blades since Aldrich is extremely resistant to magic, but. Eh, that's the price of a healer, I guess. We get pretty unlucky and Aldrich unleashes the arrows, but thank Gwen he's aiming for me and I can leave the attack away from my teammates. We play whack-a-mole with Aldrich a few times and we manage to get hit by some straight arrows, but we're fine, we're fine. This keeps up, then we may actually make it out of here with all of our phantoms and that would be huge for the twins. We bring Aldrich down to a second phase and my team is doing a good job of staying alive. 
The Lion Knight Albert jumps in to help out here and it is much appreciated. Shortly after this though, Albert manages to somehow die off screen and we're down to Swordmaster and Cirrus. Everyone rallies for one last stand and we get some really good damage off before Aldred slips away again. His HP is nearly gone, I just need one more. You know what, uh, we take those. With Aldrich down, our next opponent was the Dancer. This fight is very scary because the Mimic is weak to most of the Dancer's damage types. Fire, Slash, and Dark in the second phase. In fact, we are extremely weak to Dark. We need to be careful here. I go in solo just to test the waters and things go pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I'd say they went pretty well. We decided to come back to the Dancer later and go try our luck with Yorm, and in every other run I've done, this fight is one of the most challenging. Yorm, get down from there, you'll hurt yourself. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. No way, look how much damage we did. He's so slow, he can't even retaliate. Oh no. What have I done? Am I really gonna... Perfect! Now we're up against the Dragon Slayer armor, who is awfully slow, and thanks to the Mimic's huge lightning resistance... Wait, where, where is he going? <laughs> Hold on a second, let me try this again. As I was saying, this fight isn't too bad. We were able to successfully chain grabs together, and I accidentally discovered this really cool situation where if you grab an enemy on a stair, the grab animation actually gets cancelled and ends early. This lets the Mimic move before the opponent. This might come in handy later. But yeah, I'd say versus the Mimic, big, slow opponents don't really stand a chance because we can just chain grab them. This holds true for the Dragon Slayer armor as well. Back to the Dancer, for our second attempt I went ahead and risked Yuria and the Pale Shade because if you recall from previous runs the Dancer is weak to Dark. We successfully chain grab her while the rest of our party sits back for the most part. I miss a few grabs and she scores a few lucky hits on Yuria. Right before we finish her off this really weird interaction happens where Yuria gets thrown as I'm hugging the Dancer but she dusts herself off and we're headed over to Lothric, aka the toughest fight of this entire run. So why is Lothric so tough? For starters, despite his size, he's actually really fast. The fact that he can teleport around the map makes it really hard to pin him down, but if he goes for slow moves like that one, then things get easier. Most of the time he'll just teleport away though after being grabbed like you just saw. I don't have enough HP to trade with him across phases, so I need to pick my grabs wisely. Best case scenario is that I'm able to grab him right before he attacks. We finish off Lothric here and things are looking amazing. We still have all three phantoms and we're healthy. Note to self, do not finish off Lorien next to where he spawns in. For attempt number two, let's watch the live commentary. I'm gonna switch things up this time, brought along Sirius, Swordmaster, and Seagward. I just realized that all of their names start with an S. Uh-oh. Ugh, these tank controls make it so hard to dodge anything. Oh, we are getting wrecked. I'm already pretty low. Let's keep an eye on Sirius in case she starts healing. Wait, she's healing! I think we just made it in time. Yep, our health went up. There's no way we're making it to that one. And we're low again. I'm just gonna hang out next to you, Sirius, in case you decide to heal again. So far, so good. Beautiful. We made it to the second phase. We are still in this. Now I just need to go ahead and let my teammate. <laughs> For attempt number three, I tried something different and swapped in Orbeck, Gothard, and the Pale Shade. The plan this time was to put less emphasis on healing and focus more on taking down Lorien's first phase as quickly as possible. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to exploit his weakness to magic. I leaned on my teammates a lot for this one, and they took a beating. Thanks to some very strategic poise breaking kicks, we make it past the first phase without breaking a sweat. Shortly into phase 2, we lose Orbeck, and that's not the worst thing. We narrowly avoid this attack just in time for my team to take the aggro and for me to kick Lothric in the back. Another well-placed kick breaks his poise again, and our insane movement speed keeps us out of danger. 
After a lot of back and forth, our remaining phantoms take out Lorien and then Lothric falls shortly after, marking the end of the Twin Princes. So far we've done a good job. Going into the final fight we were only down Orbeck and Albert. Given that Cinder is weak to dark, Yuria and the Pale Shade are no-brainers. We go for a grab here and he doesn't seem to care at all, easily breaking free and taxing my teammates. He switches to the Great Lion set and gets off a Wrath of the Gods in spite of my grab and our team is taking a beating. This coward tries to heal but we don't let up and he decides to switch to a more agile form. A well placed kick breaks his poise at which point Cinder remembers that he's a Jedi Master and uses the force to smite Gothard. Like a champ though, he survives and we manage to bring him into his second form. Our team is getting destroyed, I have no idea how they survived all of that. Cinder goes for some lightning attacks here which is really good because we have a lot of lightning resistance. He begins charging one last attack but a flying kick and some quick thinking from Gothard poise breaks him so that I can finish him off. And there it is. We finally did it. Let's go.